I, th- I think I'm loud enough. I think I can get loud enough. Use, use, my, use my Marine Corps voice for a few Amen. minutes. Amen. Oh man, what a blessing it is to be back here. All right, uh, it's, been, it's been far too long uh, since uh, me and my wife Deborah have been here. And now we got the, the new addition. I think it's the first time he's been in the house too, actually. Matter of fact, it might be. Um, sec- second time he's been here? Second time? Well, that's good. Um, what a blessing the testimonies have been tonight. Uh, the singing, the, the music, the preaching, everything has just been so good. Um, I was supposed to preach a message tonight or g- deliver a devotion, whatever you call it, but sister, uh, sister Mia over here, she, uh, she, she, she convinced me um, oh, and convicted funny. me to, to change my <laughs> message to, to tell you all that from the Lord we should be uh, vegetarians, okay? So, yeah, ve- vegans, vegans and plant-based, you know, that's, that's for Sister Mia. Um, no, but for real, though, uh, I actually did just become plant-based um, full diet, no more meat. Uh, I add fish in there only because uh, our Lord, uh, I believe that that was Jesus's favorite right. food was uh, fish and bread. Yes. Uh, and if you go back in, uh, into, the, into the Old Testament, um, you're going to see in the Daniel fast, uh, he, did, he refused to eat the king's meat. And I've done a study on the king's meat and the king's meat was actually a deception of what uh, real food really was. And so uh, you guys can study that on your own. I'm not trying to convict anyone here, or, you know, <laughs> preach a message really that the Lord uh, has not really put on my heart, but it's in scripture. Uh, you can see it goes all the way back to Genesis, uh, Adam and Eve and, and plants. And um, it's, it even says in there in Genesis one that he made every um, seed bearing tree for meat unto you, not, not meat as in, you know, cattle and, and things like that, but food in general. Um, so that's just a, a plug for that. Uh, just a fun little, fun little neat tip. In fact, um, but if you have your Bibles, move over to Psalms 37, and I will be quick, uh, as, we, as I know we have uh, prayer after this, and, and I appreciate that, Brother Rico, because honestly, the preaching of God's Word is, is just as important as prayer, and, and I don't want to be um, the thing that comes between you and, and your time with God. Um, so, so let me just get out of here. We'll look, at, we'll look at what God has to say in, in just a few short verses uh, and study this devotion. And then I hope you all take something from this um, as you, you, he literally gave me less than 24 hour notice. Say, hey, brother, could you do it tomorrow? Hey, absolutely, man. Uh, I'm always ready. No problem. Um, when we're walking in the spirit, walking with God uh, and we want what God has for our lives. Really, he just puts a message on your heart all the time. Amen. And you, you may, for, for women, the way I look at it is your singing is, is your preaching. You're playing your instruments. That's your preaching. And when you're witnessing to folks in your neighborhood or wherever you are, that's your preaching. Um, you know, um, w- women are up here all the time. And I, I've heard some, some women that can deliver a better message sometimes than, than, than some men. Um, but that's, that's, that's a story for another time. But Psalms 37, uh, verses uh, 3 and I'm going to kind of run through this all the way to uh, verse 37 over, over here. And then we're going to jump over to uh, two other sections of the word. And then I'll, I'll expound this for you guys. So Psalms 37 verses 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Verses seven, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Verses number eight, second half, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Verse number nine, for evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Verse number 13, jump down. The Lord shall laugh at him for he seeth that his day is coming. He's talking about the evildoers. The, the Lord's going to laugh at the evildoers. Verses 16. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the broke or for the arms of the wicked shall be broken. But the Lord upholdeth the righteous. Verse 23. Move over. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he deli- and he delighteth in his way. Verse 24. Thou though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Verse 26, he is ever merciful and lendeth and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Verse 34, wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. Verse 37, mark the perfect man and and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. Move over to... 
Luke 15, verses 7 and verse 10. So we have Jesus, or we, excuse me, we have David preaching a psalm, speaking a psalm, singing a psalm. And then we have Jesus here in Luke. And Jesus says in Luke chapter 15, verses 7 and 10, he says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Verse 10, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Now, the last verse to complete this is from James. So David, Jesus, and James. And it's in James chapter 3, verses 16. James chapter 3, verses 16. And James is filled with so, so much good wisdom in there, so many golden nuggets. James chapter 3, verses 16 says, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. So the devotion that I want us to think about here, the message really that that God's put on my heart is there's one word it's called repentance if you go back to Luke 15 and you look at that Jesus this is the words of our God Jesus Christ he says there is more joy over one sinner that repented than over 99 just persons which need no repentance and we know he's talking to the Pharisees here it says there is joy in the presence of even all the angels of God over one sinner that repented. I know that we're Christians here. But what I also know is that I still have a sin nature and that I'm still on this earth and that I've not been completely, fully perfected yet. But what I do know also is that in 1 John and verse uh, chapter 1, verses 9, it says that if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm going to give you a few more verses and then we'll finish this up. Um, and, I'll, and I'll really tell you what this is all about here. Proverbs 28, 13. And you guys don't have to flip to any of these because I'm just going to go right down, right down the line. But it says, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Acts 3.19 says, Repent ye and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of our Lord. 2 Chronicles 39 says, For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if ye return unto him. Matthew 9.13 says, But ye, but go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am come, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The Lord is not slack concerning, we all know 2 Peter 3 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, some man count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Matthew 4 17, from that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's Christ's gospel. Repent, 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 repent. We see that. Repent and be saved. We, we see that all over the New Testament. Revelation 3.19 says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. The concept is repentance. I think that in Christianity today, this is a lost art. I think repentance is not being preached in churches. I was witnessing to a, to a young sergeant at my work even just today. Uh, and every evil, vile word that you could even imagine was coming out of her, uh, was coming out of her. Out of her heart. Because, right, what, what comes out of the mouth comes out of the heart. Mm -hmm. right. So that was deep inside. But she was telling me about church. She was telling me about the rock church, right? Yeah. This is that church that everybody knows, right? <laughs> the rock church, okay? And I even invited her to come tonight. She said, no, I can't make it. Okay, well, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that the Lord has a message for you, you know? And yeah. I'm not, you know, th look, you know, everybody's on their own path. Yeah, right. um, but, 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 but I said, you know, if you really love God, why do you speak like that, you know? She's so worried. She was so worried about her career and about about her reenlistment package and about her future orders and about 
different things that she was so frantic. She was going, doing things that she would normally not do, saying, I'm going to go right to the Sergeant Major's office. You know, I'm going to skip all of you and the chain of command and everything. And you're going to find yourself in a lot of trouble. You do that. Um, praise the Lord. We have the high priest, Jesus. We don't need to go to a priest anymore. We can go straight to him, you know, with all of our problems and cast them on him. Um, but I really felt like that was a moment to where, you know, you, somebody that we know in, in, in life espouses to be a Christian, espouses to be a disciple of Christ. Maybe they are saved. Maybe they're backslidden as, as I once was. Maybe, as I shared with Brother Tracy, as I shared with Brother uh, Jason, uh, who are my dear friends I love so much just recently, but maybe she was going through what I was going through. And as some of you all know, I had orders to go to officer training school. And I thought, and there's the reason that I, that I read that verse in, uh, in, in, in James. I'm going to go back to it. For where envying and strife is, there is, I'm going to skip just confusion, but there is every evil work. Where envying is, there is every evil work. There's a few other verses in the Gospels that talks about uh, why Jesus was put on the cross was because the Pharisees envied him. They envied him. And so me, for me, I envied that officer. I envied that rank. I envied that training. I envied the pay. I envied everything. I wanted it. It, it almost consumed me. And it like, it's, I, I prayed for that. It's like you, pray, you, you, you ask the Lord, you say, okay, well, this is the one plus two plus three. Uh, you, do, you, do all the, you do all the Christian equation. You say, oh, well, I prayed about it right. I did everything right. But my heart wasn't right. Amen. My heart wasn't right. It wasn't where God was directing. It wasn't where God was leading. And for almost three years now, this is even I have been working on these things since before I was married, since before I had a child. Um, when I had everything to lose and everything to risk. And I just so flippantly cast away the Lord's plan for my life and said, no, I'm, I'm breaking through that wall right there. Because I'm a Marine and I deserve that and that's what I want and that's what I'm going to get. And I went and got it. And I went and got it my way. But I didn't do it waiting on the, I, sh- I should have waited on the Lord. I didn't wait on the Lord. Didn't do it God's way. I envied that thing of the world that we just sang about in, in, in Second John. I envied vanity. Why did I need that? God had already given me everything that I had ever needed and wanted. Way more than I deserve. Way more than I need. Way more than I want. I have food, clothing, and shelter. What more do I need? God doesn't even say He's going to provide the shelter for us. He just says He's going to provide food and clothing. Because the Spirit is food and clothing. But I have all that and more. So how much more should I be that much more thankful? So when I... Pastor Fisher preached so many messages. Pastor Cheney put messages. And if I can encourage you tonight, don't put another message of God underneath the carpet. I put the messages under the carpet. He preached a lot of messages. And I was just like, no, that's not for me. No, I'm not. not no, I don't want to hear that. I did that. I, I'm a sojourner up here. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, I don't want to be called a preacher, a pastor, anything. I don't, I don't want that. Um, you, you, asked me to, you asked me to just do a devotion. And I appreciate that you called it a devotion because I don't even feel worthy to be up here. But, what, but, when, I, but when I confess that sin, when I confess that sin, and, and, praise, and praise, praise our God for, for our brother in Malawi that we're still praying for Amen. over there, Matt Herbst. Much first, yes. Amen, in Malawi, Africa. When, but when I had confessed that sin to the Lord, I was confused because I didn't know what my future held, but I knew I was going on faith. I had heard a message on do the right thing, and it was so sound. It was so sound. I had no choice. God had my heart. He had convicted me. He ripped me. He chastened me. He rebuked me. He did all those things that we as Christians, we don't want. You know, the, the flesh doesn't want to be chastened. Um, but then as I started telling people, you know, that I, I didn't do the right thing and, and, and I asked for their forgiveness, they would give me verse after verse after verse. One in that the verse in Psalms, right? Going back to David, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. And when I read the rest of Psalms 37, which we just read here, I said, oh my word. I said, I was the wicked one. I was the evildoer that would have been cut off had I not departed from my evil to do good. The wicked shall be cut off. 
wait on the Lord, I would not have been exalted. The Lord was laughing at me. The, the, the little that a righteous man had, has, had, was better than whatever I could have got wickedly from God. And so I came to, I came to my sense. But then they, they encouraged me with this verse here that it says, there's joy. Because I was so, I was so sad. I was so upset. I wanted to, you know, I just wanted to disappear. I was like, wow, like I really have done the Lord wrong. I've done the church wrong. I told Pastor Channing, Pastor Fisher, I said, I'm so sorry for everything. I said, whatever you have to do, you kick me out, you discipline me, whatever it is, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And I just turned from my way. But that's repentance. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the art, that the, the lost art that the church or the espoused church these days mm -hmm. in Christendom is missing. There's genuine people that say, oh, Lord, forgive me. Forgive my sin. Yes. When the cloud was moving in the Old Testament in Exodus... They were only supposed to move with the cloud. We ought to be very careful in our life about moving when God has not moved the cloud yet. We only move when the cloud moves. I don't know if that lines up with New Testament, if there's some, if there's some correlation there. But I take that as a lesson learned. Yes. I know Paul. Back and forth. Back and forth. There were some places that the Lord, the Holy Spirit allowed him to go. Some places they didn't allow him to go. And now, I'll tell you, when I confess my sin to the Lord, I never had more peace Amen. ever in my life. Right. It was the peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. I couldn't even understand it. I had the best sleep in the world Amen. ever. Wow. And I just want to encourage you all, uh, very short message um, in, in repentance. Just study repentance. Mm -hmm. I think um, I, I, used to, I used to lead people to the Lord, right? We say that, lead people to the Lord, but we don't save them. We just plant we, we just we just plant and water that's, right. that's all we do um and i'm very 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 hesitant these days um, because i know for a fact uh, maybe not fact, but i know that i've led some people in a prayer who were not genuine who mm -hmm. didn't repent mm -hmm. uh, who didn't understand what that fully meant mm -hmm. who weren't ready to give it all up for the lord he says if you lose your life for me you shall find it you shall gain it Amen. Amen. i want to lose my life again Amen. there you go that's right. That's right. Thanks, Brother Rico.